What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Gamer Boys. I'm your host, Colonel and Dad, Garrett Morlang, and here in the virtual studio with me is the king of video games, Adrian Holmes. How's it going, Adrian? Mr. Moore Lang, it's been too long, my good man. We can't do this. I I, I need to, we need to do this every week. Gotta These break everything. weeks, yeah. you know what I mean? They throw I you know. off. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Honestly, it had only been like a, we only just took the one week off because it was 4th of July and it I. It felt like a month, dude. <laughs> it, it, seriously, seriously. It was like uh, Saturday because it was before I did the show notes. I usually do those Sunday. It was Saturday. I'm like, holy, holy cow, like. Has it really only been a week since we did the last episode? Like it seriously felt like it's been a month. Like I was I like, know. like oh, like second guessing. Like how how do I do this? <laughs> like what am I? <laughs> how, how does how does this work? <laughs> so it it's good to be back. Feels good to be yeah, back. I'm, I'm it, doing good, man. How about yourself? Yeah, uh, I am doing good as well. Um, yeah, I had a great uh, great Fourth of July. Uh, did you do anything fun? Anything special for Fourth of July? Uh. You know, the usual, the same thing everybody in the country probably did is hang out with family, yeah. eat some barbecue and watch some fireworks. That's it. So that's the, the three pillars of 4th and of enjoy, July. <laughs> I would say enjoy the day off, but every day is a day off right now. So, oh, hey. Wow. Not not forever. It's not, not for a forever long. thing. Not for, not for long. Not for long. Um, yeah, that's great. I'm glad, glad, uh, glad you're able to hang out with some family because I know it's not the case for everyone like obviously yeah, that's, that's what everyone too. hopes to do is be with family and friends but um but yeah it was same for me I got to hang out with some kind of double dip so I got to hang out with friends earlier in the day use a swimming pool that was nice uh I, which <laughs> it, it's it's actually really you got funny. them saved I, in your I, phone as oh this is a swimming pool friend my swimming pool friend <laughs> um <laughs> I I mean so here's here's the deal I'll be All completely right, honest me. I'll be completely honest I do not really like the water. I don't like swimming. It's not my oh, deal. Boy, water parks. Guy. I mean, I've told the story on my show about the whole water slide incident where my rib cage like shoved up inside my body and like almost killed me. I couldn't breathe. So ever since <laughs> it was then, one I've, time. Ever since then, I've had this weird thing with just like, and it's not a phobia. It's just like I, it's not fun to me. And I think deep down it goes it's probably a weird You've been like, traumatized yeah it's a weird like trauma thing but thinking about it like in the moment i'm like that's not that i'm scared i just like don't really want to get in there it's like it doesn't seem fun but i got that's in there. where it stems from though uh yeah it's that's probably exactly the root of it um <laughs> therapy with adrian <laughs> getting to the bottom of this um now tell me how you felt when the rib cage was in your throat let me get in yeah, my... recline your chair. <laughs> Sitting in the reclining chair in my in my office here. Um but uh but man, getting there, I mean, even before we got there, my kids were stoked out of their mind. They love the water, they love the pool. And so I'm like, I can't, like, I don't want to be the crappy dad who just like no, we're sits not on, going. Sits on the side of the pool. Like, I would go, but, like, just sit on the side of the pool and, like, arms crossed and just, like, looking angry. Like, no, I want Having my kids fun to boys. have. Yeah, I, I don't know. I want to be, like, the fun dad that, and, like, that, like have them remember. Like, this will be a memory. Like, oh, dad actually got the pool, you know? <laughs> so I did. Have they like, never I, seen you swim? Have your sons never seen you swim before? <sighs> no, really? They, my, my youngest might not have. My, cause he's two. Uh... But Shepard definitely has at least once, at least once, maybe <laughs> twice. Um, yeah, I just, I don't, if, I, if it's an option, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't normally do it. So yeah, and, and we actually had a lot of fun. It was like really, really, really good time. I was I, maybe coming around at least on swimming Ex pools. I still don't like the beach. I don't, I don't like the sand, don't like the beach, all that stuff. But the pools, I might be okay with. I, what I what do they there. call that? Uh, um exposure exposure therapy exposure therapy yes exactly yeah uh, see man. the more you go swimming the more you'll like it just that's and it's still it summertime and you're in san diego so that's the perfect conditions it's always summertime here there uh, it is well except for when it's definitely cold in the winter but <laughs> um <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough about me uh, floating around in a, in a, in a pool um, on 4th of July. So let's <laughs> get on with uh, the show here. Today, we're going to be talking about 
the PS5 slimming down a little bit, Sega backing off of blockchain and Overwatch 2 slowing down on story missions. Uh, but first, let's give a quick shout out to our Patreon producers, Bumble Smash, Eddie Martin, and Kajoma01, and our Super Gamer sponsors, Julie Bates and Mama Mare. If you want to be awesome, just like those folks, you can head, to, head over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys. Support us over there starting at just $1 a month. That's right, one buck. You get episodes in, uh, early and ad-free, such as this show. Um, previously, you would get book club. But actually, the end of this month, gotta let you all know. I mean, you you should already know. We've been talking about this for a few weeks, but this is a month that Super Later Boys is going to be continuing on. You can get episode one of Super Later Boys already on Patreon. It's going to be a Patreon exclusive show. You can only get it over there. Uh, unlike Super uh, Gamer Book Club, which eventually came to everyone. This is one the plan for this one. It's going to go over to Patreon. So you could get it for one dollar, get episode one. And at the end of this month, get episode two. Think about checking that out. Um, we have some other tiers uh, up from there, but um, we'll talk more about our Patreon later on. Um, one last thing I do want to talk about with Super Gamer Book Club. This month, the free episode, uh, well, sorry, last month, <laughs> Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney came out. Fantastic episode. Ton of fun recording it, me and Adrian. Dive into that game. Uh, but the one coming out at the end of this month is going to be the Super Metroid episode was featuring Nintendo Cartridge Society. So you'll be getting that one for free soon enough. Uh, but if you just can't wait, you're just like, ah, I got to get in there. It's just a buck. Think about it. You can go listen to it right now, early and without the ads. So, all right. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. I do want to give a huge shout out to Jack Sriracha and Yate for allowing us to use their music on our show. We very much appreciate them having these awesome tunes in the background right now while we're streaming later for you guys to listen to while you're wa listening to or watching the show. Um, I, I, I love it. I love the vibe it gets a little more like, Hey, there's two guys hanging out, chilling, listening to some music, chatting about video games. Uh, and I hope you guys like it too. And if you do make sure to go show them some love and support over on Apple music and Spotify links to both of those are going to be in the show description, um, on podcast and YouTube. So yeah, go give them uh, a follow? Can you? Is that what you do on Spotify, Apple Music? No. Add them to your uh, library. Add, add them to, to your yeah, library. Add to yeah. library. And listen. Just put on repeat. That's what I do. I mean, that's basically what we do every Monday night. Like, I just have a playlist that just plays continually the whole time. So, uh, hopefully that uh, uh, helps them out, and uh, you should help them out, too. All right. It's now time to <clears> check <throat> the mail. Oh, so man. that's uh we got a fire got a blow dust, the off, dust uh, off yeah the heavy bot over there the heavyweight bot casting champion of the world super gamer bot uh let's uh get the get the whole super gamer bot warmed up over here <laughs> I'll um get the, don't worry you got yeah. it you got it yeah i'm cranking don't worry you crank crank turning the crank it's like it's normally water powered, but it hasn't rained in a while. <laughs> water powered. So yeah, it's like a big like water wheel, like what you see in a river, but it's <laughs> we're in a drought in California. So sorry. we both had to have one installed. <laughs> it's exactly. Uh so I'm running the garden hose right now. So our water bill is gonna be off the charts, but whatever it takes to get Super Gamer Bot running, that's that's what we. Uh, See, this we is, this for is another here. reason why we can't have it. Uh, <laughs> we can't have it be too long between episodes. That rust will get in there. Yeah, yeah, it gets all seized up. The salt water's not great for it. Don't ask me why I have salt water coming through my hose at my house. That's just it's, it's, it's part just of the salt. living in San Diego. Yeah, it's it's in the air. It's in the air. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Um, all right, this first question comes to us from Kajoma01, and they ask, with the popularity of the Lord of the Rings and Magic the Gathering crossover, what should the next big crossover of two IPs be? Adrian, what is your thought? Uh, piggybacking off of that, something I found out recently that um, I don't know how it got past me. I, I Actually, I do know how it got past me uh, because I'm not a dork. Um <laughs> Yeah, but right. now that it involves something cool, I'm all about it. So apparently it was announced late last year that Magic the Gathering and Final Fantasy are doing a collaboration together. Um, and I think that's actually friggin' perfect because I'm pretty sure it's going to be all the summons or uh, as they're known now, icons in uh, Final Fantasy 16 uh, are going to be the cards that they're going to choose for the decks. And I think that okay. fits like a glove. So 
that seems like a match made in heaven. I'm all about it. All and right. and magic is finally cool. Magic <laughs> is finally cool. Magic is finally cool. All right, all right. Yeah, that 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 would be sick. I mean, I I was skeptical on the whole crossover with Magic the Gathering thing at first. Like I was like, it just seems so weird. Like I I like when it, when I first heard of like before it happened, like the announcement of like oh Warhammer forty thousand come into Magic the Gathering, like that doesn't make sense. Magic the Gathering's fantasy and Warhammer forty k is like future, like by forty thousand years or whatever. And then um, they made it work. And they made it work, and it's sick. Like the artwork they have on some of those things is so cool. Really cool cards, um, and even the Lord of the Rings one. I mean that that makes more sense. But those were cool. So hearing Final Fantasy, I'm like, hey. I don't know how they're going to do it, but if it's if they're going to like if they would base it off a specific game or if it'd be like more like just Final Fantasy in general. But I, yeah, I'm totally down for that. I, I think that'd be that's going to be sick. Might even be one worth like yeah, I like I, I would totally pick some some of those up if there's like some cool art. Uh, like I already have some Magic the Gathering cards. I don't even play, but Yoji Chinkawa, the, ar- the artist who uh has been with Does the Hide- Metal Gear covers. Hide- he's been with Hideo Kojima since the beginning. He did all the Metal Gear stuff, and then when Kojima left Konami, he went with them to Kojima Productions. Did all the Death Stranding artists too, uh, art as well. So um, Yoji Shinkawa is a man, and he did like a Secret Lair Magic: The Gathering set. And I was like, I gotta get these. Like it's I don't play, but you know what? They look gorgeous, and they're up on my wall. So heck yeah! Hopefully, I get some sick uh, Final Fantasy stuff for me. Um, I would love I want okay I'm listening I love I love Warhammer you all know that uh-huh. um, unfortunately there, there there is another game it's uses basically the same models it's within the Warhammer universe um, called Kill Team and it's basically Warhammer but smaller scale like a Warhammer a game of actual Warhammer 40,000 could take like two, three, four hours to play, depending on how big your army is. Like, it could take a while. Me and my brother will play well into the night <clears throat> when we play. Uh, so the figures this... are even smaller than than normal? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, they, so there's a game called Kill Team, and it just uses, instead of, like, having a bunch of units, a bunch of, like, units within your army, like, instead of controlling, like, a whole battalion or something like that, you control just a single unit of, like, eight to ten guys. And it's played on a smaller board, and it's more of a skirmish game, they call it. And according to the box, you can play within, like, and like 45 minutes to an hour is, like, the tip of the average, you know? Could be more, could be less, but about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, See, now this sounds like my kind of game. Yeah. It's, I, I own a copy. I have ne- I, I will be, I'll come clean. I've yet to play Kill Team, but I've watched a lot of it online. It looks awesome. Uh, Not- I can't wait to one day paint up my box of minis that I have for it. Uh, but is this military based or fantasy based or? Well, it's, 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 it's called Warhammer 40k Kill Team. So it's still Warhammer. It uses all the same armies and stuff from Warhammer oh, 40,000. Okay. So it's futuristic. It's, you know, the year 40,000, whatever, or, or it's in the 40th millennia. I don't, I don't, I don't know how the time works in Warhammer, but whatever that means. Uh, yeah, so it's it's well into the future. It's using like all the same minis and models that I already have. Just like I said, it's a small scale game. Instead of big, you're controlling a whole battalion of units, you just control one single unit, like eight to ten guys. Mm. Um, it's a little like a lot faster paced game. So I would love that. Um, and I I kind of got this idea already because I have a. I have over here the Star Wars Shatterpoint box, which is also a skirmish game, but with Star Wars. I saw you won some stuff recently in a contest. I won another one of those. Yeah, (laughs) I already have one and I won a second one. I was more excited about the expansion pack. So it came with like a little expansion box with Obi-Wan and like some other stormtroopers or or clone troopers. Sorry. So um, that's the reason I entered and I ended up winning. I'm like, sick. Well, I mean, if you don't need that main pack, (laughs) I'm just saying. Okay. I I mean, you got to. You gotta put them all together. You gotta paint them. Like here's here's Bo Katan. Like do you do you have the setup to Garrett? All I have is time. Okay. <laughs> all right. At yeah. at this point in time, we'll see. We'll see. Um. Anyways, so I want a skirmish style game like Kill Team or the Star Wars Shadow Point, but I want Metal Gear Solid, where you can choose like so the different armies would be uh real like, armies, right? 
Well, no, I, I would, I want it to be all, all characters for the most part. Obviously, like there would have to be some filler, but, um, like so for the good guys, like obviously it's like you can Snake and Meryl and the other people from uh, the, um, oh, for the the rat, the rat patrol. That that's the name of the crew. Like in in, in the fourth one, right, Metal Gear Solid mm-hmm. Four. Um, like all, so these are like good guys that you can pick, and there's like little miniatures of them all. Uh, and like the bad guys, like you can choose. Like, all right, are you going to be like Metal Gear Solid One bad guys, like from you know where it's like Psycho Mantis and Vulcan Raven and stuff like that, or do I go with Van Solid and Solid, yeah, stuff like that. Like I would love a skirmish game where it has the armies almost cut up. Uh, not just like by faction, like good guys, bad guys, whatever, like different teams, but also like from the different games as well. I think that'd be so, so sick. Um, so give me a skirmish game with, with Metal Gear Solid. I think that'd be awesome. I'd love to paint a bunch of minis with uh, Didn't with you just guys. back a Metal Gear Solid uh, <laughs> tabletop game? <coughs> yes. Isn't uh, that, it's, isn't, is that not it? It's not a skirmish. It, it, it it's a it's not a skirmish type game, from what I understand. It's more of like there's there's an actual board and a map, and you move around. There are minis in there. You're right. So it's based off Metal Gear Solid One. So it's gonna have like probably all those guys. It'll have Psycho Mantis, Vulcan Raven, but Vulcan Raven. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's the difference is that's like a set board with squares that you have to move on, and so, like there's a grid. Where skirmish type game, like you measure with a tape measure, and like everything's a lot more fluid, a lot more flexibility to do whatever you want. Like you can move anywhere gotcha, you want gotcha. on the board, do what you want, stuff like that. So that's that's the difference there. More of a gameplay difference than what's included in the box. Because you're right, I'll, I'll be getting all those cool minis, but but. Uh, so maybe I'll just make up my own rules. I was for, gonna say uh, make up your own game. game. Yeah, yeah, I already yeah. have the minis. Just make up my own game. Um, so yeah, give me that kill team, and uh, in Metal Gear. Uh, this next, the last question here. So Prince, a lot ask. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. This oh, can also boy. be this. This can also be part of the question because we need to discuss whether this particular piece of food actually sounds good let's just um, get it over with come on i had a crab rangoon pizza over the break it was mostly crust with crab rangoon filling as the quote-unquote sauce and then okay. chives and sweet and sour sauce drizzled on top he says yum so that's first question does that actually sound good to you the crab rangoon <laughs> sounded interesting but then when he said sweet and sour sauce and what else was it peppers chives. or chilies or something on it uh chives like green onion oh chives so like all things uh, that are in a typical crab rangoon but it just but it on just a pizza i'd rather just weird. have it as crab rangoon though yeah that's what i'm feeling like it just seems a little like, like that's a little a little too much that's not his main question though he wanted to say he says all that to say what's a weird pizza that you enjoy and then in, he also says excluding the stupid pineapple debate. So no pineapple on pizza. Now I'll talk about that because we all know it's That's automatic. Trash. I don't even know why yeah. he brought that up. We don't. Yeah. We are all, everyone already agrees it's a bad pizza. It's, yeah. So. <clears throat> um, I don't know if this is weird or more so unconventional. It's not something that I seek out, mm-hmm. but if somebody were to order one, I would definitely, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to refuse a slice, uh, but barbecue pizza. I think ain't half bad. You know, the it's like, like the, it's, it's like a regular like a pizza. barbecue chicken. Yeah. And then okay. they had they had they add the little like the barbecue sauce drizzle, drizzle on sauce. the top. Yeah. Actually, it's not that's not half bad. Now, I agree with you. I've had like a barbecue chicken pizza. Very good. There was one time I forget. I think it was like. It was like a barbecue, but it was like using pork i think it was like pulled pork basically that was also Uh, very good that was also i don't know about on pizza though um yeah i I, i'm with you that that, it it is i don't that's not really a weird one that that, the barbecue but it is not a normal it's not your typical pizza so i I, i'll give it to you for that i'll give it to you for that like it's not like the typical at least in my sphere that people order no i don't i that's i don't order i don't like i said i don't order it but, but if somebody good. were to order it at a function and they're like, hey, you want a slice? I'm not going to say no. Heck yeah. Uh, my pizza, uh, my weird pizza that I really enjoyed, past tense. Unfortunately, it's tricky to get in the United States, um, at least in California. It might be easier in, in Florida. Um, oh, is, uh, what are you getting ready to say? Alligator meat pizza? 
Over in Papua New Guinea, uh, there was a time where it, it's it's always very hard in the grocery store because you know the grocery stores are very very limited and simple there to get good meat or even a consistent. Where are meat. we going with this? And so they would you could buy packaged crocodile in the grocery store, <sighs> and we did a buffalo crocodile pizza. It's a buffalo chicken pizza. It's a buffalo crocodile. Let me tell you, it's not quite the same as chicken. It is very close, though, and and <laughs> was actually surprisingly tasty. I really liked it. So now, that's my weird pizza that I honestly wish I could get more often, at least once in a while, just for, like, the nostalgia of it. I know it's probably – it's. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's better than actual, like, buffalo chicken pizza. Okay, so but, you're not insane. Good. Yeah, no, 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 no. But it is surprisingly tasty. I really um, enjoyed it, so – I can't necessarily knock you for for eating crocodile because I have had family who have eaten, you know, alligator and other, you know, creatures. Tastes tastes great. I mean, it can get get tough and chewy real quick if you're not careful with how you cook it. But otherwise, it's like it really does. uh, I guess I guess that does count as weird because 90 percent of people are not eating crocodile pizza. So I'll give you that. I'll give you that one. (laughs) Yeah. Find me a place in America that sells a crocodile or alligator pizza other than Florida. Florida. I was going to say Florida Florida and that's about it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, So, yeah, that's that's my pick. Uh, And if you have a way to get crocodile or alligator, you should try it. I don't. Right. I'll, I'll I'll order some off Amazon for you. Obviously. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna take your word for it. Oh man. I mean, you dip anything in buffalo sauce, and it's automatically good, though. Like that's the thing. Like it's, it's just at that point, you just taste the buffalo sauce. It's more uh, just like a carrier of. It's got to be some strong buffalo sauce because I'm thinking <laughs> of stuff like you ever had escargot. I have not. Good luck. Try dipping that in barbecue sauce. No, thank you. I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. that's what I thought. <laughs> I am good. All right. Well, that is it for the mailbag. Remember, we need your questions for the mailbag segment, not only here on the show, but with Super Later Boys coming up. We need more questions for that to kind of, so that way we have something fun and interesting to discuss over there. So it could be about sure, anything, not just games. Exactly. Yeah. With Super Later Boys, anything and everything. If you want us to do like a top five tier list, if you want us to do, you know, discuss the intricacies of world economics. Um, <laughs> that or just I don't how know, our week was. Or how our week was. Yeah. Just write in over anywhere on social media. You can DM us. Or if you want to do it the more fun way, go over to supergamerboys.com slash discord and join our discord server. Totally free. And uh, you can hang out with us during the week and chat with us not only about video games, but then leave your questions over there for Super Later Boys and or the show here, show proper. So think about it. It's fun. All right. Uh, It's now time for the Nerdy Nudes. It's now time for the Nerdy Nudes. Yes, that was a good one. Thank you. That's two weeks pent up right there absolutely incredible that was pitch um, perfect if, <laughs> if i don't say so myself yeah um this first news story comes to us from gamespot written by alessandro barbosa microsoft says 400 dollars ps5 slim coming this year maybe A new slim PlayStation 5 could be released in the near future, according to statements made by Microsoft in court documentation for the ongoing FTC versus Microsoft trial. In a portion of the court documents where Microsoft is arguing in favor of including the Nintendo Switch as a competitor to both Xbox and PlayStation, a line makes mention (laughs) of a new lower cost PlayStation 5 model that Sony hasn't yet announced. Microsoft mentions that its competitor is planning to release a PlayStation 5 slim later this year at the same reduced price point, referencing the cheaper digital edition PlayStation 5, which retails currently for $400. This wouldn't be the first mention of a PS5 Slim, with rumors of the consoles dating back to September last year. Since then, further reports regarding the console and additional accessories have surfaced, with one report suggesting that Sony will launch an external Blu-ray drive alongside the console to add disc support to both the new Slim and existing digital-only console. The report suggests that the PlayStation 5 5 Slim will be packaged both standalone and bundled with the external drive and launched sometime in 2023, uh, September 2023. 
Uh, reports surrounding the PlayStation 5 Slim have also indicated that the new console will not feature any processing power improvements, quashing any suggestion that this could also be a PS5 Pro uh, model. So, your thoughts? Uh, is this... Yeah, again, there's no confirmation at all here. But if this were to be true, in the next couple months, you'd get a PS5 Slim. Is that something that interests you at all? Is that something that, like, you would go out and trade in your current PS5 for a Slim? Or do you like the current PS5? Or That would greatly interest me. Um, I am not a fan of the current PS5 design really? or size. Oh, it is very it's, big. So beautiful. I don't, I don't think so, man. I think... It, it's way too look at me. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just, should. I prefer my you stuff should. to like, <laughs> to blend in to the background. So I'm not like looking at a giant Wi Fi router <laughs> while I'm playing my games. You know what I mean? With, um, and it also makes it a lot more portable too. So if I want to take it um, somewhere with me. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. I've been into that. I am also a uh, new proud parent. So. Uh, oh. For for people who can't see, uh, I got a new little a little addition here. I got a nice uh, uh, Series S, and let me tell you, <laughs> this thing is tiny, tiny. I could fit this in my backpack. It's so small. That's so awesome. If Sony were to be able to do something with a PS5 uh, Slim that could even be maybe like I don't know twenty percent larger than this, I would gladly gladly trade in my my regular ps5 for that as long as i okay. get the same power output i'm good all right all right um yeah i mean honestly i i might be there with you too i i love my ps5 like i actually like to look it at is it. a it's a good console i just don't like the way it looks <laughs> uh to me it, it reminds me of like it almost looks like someone like wearing like a white trench coat they have like a high collar up or something like that i guess what it like seto kaiba like, from Oh, yeah sure yeah 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 exactly <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> That's exactly it. who it is. I love it. I think it looks so just over the top and just great. Um, but yeah, I, I I also, it would be nice if it would fit my TV stand because currently it like just doesn't fit places very well. Like, Thank you. So even though it looks sick, it's not practical. I'm struggling to so. figure out somewhere to, to um, stick it in my entertainment center. Yeah, even if it was just flat, the same size, but just flat, like that would be better. But because it has like the wings, it immediately makes it like really impractical for like sticking in tight, you know, shelves and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I I'd be willing to give up the whole plate thing, too. I'm fine with that. Just yeah. I mean, make it make it look like a like a traditional PlayStation or, hon- you know, what honestly, I mean? yeah, honestly, the, the whole plate thing is so funny because. They made it seem like that was going to be like this major, like, I don't know, like <laughs> a main point of, uh, of, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. Like something like that, they're going to be doing a selling a lot, point, a selling point. Yeah. For the PS five, where they're going to be constantly coming out with these crazy new plates that you can get and keep upgrading. I think they didn't even get with the what, Final like, Fantasy ones. We got like two or three so far. We got like black ones and purple ones. We got black. We got all the regular ones: the black, blue, that's right, uh, red, basically, purple, and, that's, and pink. That's I think. true. And basically, for any of the controller colors, they've come out with a plate for it. Right, like, but there's no special <laughs> edition plates. Like not Japan got Final edition. Fantasy plates. We didn't get nothing. Really, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Yeah, they got countries. Final Fantasy plates and a oh. Final Fantasy controller, and we didn't get anything. Jeez, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, you would like think with every with every first party Sony game, they should be putting out plates why not oh, yeah i mean that was originally before <clears throat> before test stranding was announced for ps5 uh which ultimately is why i bought a playstation 5 remember originally i wasn't gonna buy one until ragnarok came out mm-hmm. um and i was gonna and I, my thing was like i'm gonna buy and i'm gonna buy the ragnarok special edition because i want the cool plate they never did anything with that either which is why they did a controller like, and that was it <clears throat> which i got that like the controller is sick i love right it. but uh, why didn't they design plates like that with that design language like the like a plates with this yeah like what it would look sick like the blue the white the the the, the, the wolves on there like sign me up they but. goofed they goofed big time it's crazy but you know what they're not the only ones because up until recently <laughs> nintendo was goofing um because they what it was maybe two or three years into the switch's life when they finally started doing custom or not custom um 
special edition Joy-Con and That's systems. True. That's true. Um, and even still, they don't have enough colors I, that I would. How do you not have like color schemes from your past systems? Like you don't have an NES right. palette. You don't have a you know SNES yeah, GameCube. You, you have to go to Colorware for that and spend like three times the amount you would normally right. would for a controller. <laughs> that should have been one of the first things that they did was yeah. do classic uh, classic sets. But yeah, <clears throat> I don't run a company, but it's the same thing for going back to to PlayStation. Yeah, I'd be willing to give up all the the size and and extra plates and all that yeah for a much smaller console i already don't have a disc drive so i know that's not taking up a whole lot of space inside the chassis so exactly let's just you know keep cutting it down keep cutting it down cut it down cut it in half um it, i would love for it to be you know how much of a difference it was from the ps2 to the ps2 slim oh yeah. i would love it to be that level yeah it was a massive of difference. a difference yeah it was huge. It was like a fraction of the regular PS2 size. Yeah, it was. Act- it was actually insane how much they were able to cut out of yes. that. Like I don't, I don't know how they did it. What kind of crazy like dark magic they were doing over there? But it was like, what the heck? But if like, they did that, it, if they did that twenty years ago, Garrett, then they can do it today. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, sure. I mean, their biggest issue uh, would be cooling. Like they figured it out with PS2. Yeah, but. PS2 never was was it does, didn't quite output the same amount of power as PS5 and this Xboxes do nowadays. So they weren't they were they'd get hot, but not like if they could stuff, fit. not like hardware does nowadays. So that's like uh, that's my only thought is like they could do it, but it's just going to take a lot bigger and there's, and but, or noisier fan. Like that's 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 the that's okay. That's the only issue with a slim nowadays is because there's so much literal power going in there and heat coming off of it is it's. It's like, all right, you're going to sacrifice size for it might be noisy now, you know, like, because that's like uh, well, old, old old consoles were noisy. Like, think about it. Think about your 360. Think about oh, yeah. PS3. Like nowadays. PS4. We, we, PS4 was yeah, a jet engine. Jet engine. Exactly. So, you know, it's nice. Like right now, like the PS5 is most mostly silent. Like I rarely hear mine. Also, I'm like real close to it. So thinking about like, all right, if I get a slim, like I might start hearing it more, which isn't a huge. Here's, here's my here, question. But, Mm-hmm. I I know that a lot of people hate it, hate the idea of it. If they were able to cut it down as significantly as PS2 to PS2 Slim, would you put up with an external power break? Um, yeah, I don't have any issues. With that. I I never really had issues. I mean, it it can be a pain in the butt depending on your TV setup, like if like your TV stand that you have, like oh, it doesn't quite fit. In, un, under it so i gotta stick it behind there but other than that like i never care like the 360 had a massive brick you know and I, oh my god i didn't i that that the original power brick yes crazy so and like i never really cared much about that so i don't yeah that's if, if that's what it took to get it slimmer is like a power brick and you know a giant fan that's a little noisy like i don't know i i would be maybe less quick to go out and jump and get one, but I wouldn't be like, if this one ever had issues down the road, I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm not going to get the slam. I got to get the base one. Like, no, yeah, I'd go pick that up in a second. I don't, I don't care what they do to make it smaller. If they make it smaller and redesign it, I'm getting it. Yeah. Hands down. All right. Well, hopefully these, uh, uh, these please be true. true. <laughs> I mean, cause that could be, it just seems to me like that, it seems crazy that we haven't heard anything. If September really is a date, that's two months away, right? September, uh, July, August. Yeah. Well, I mean, if well, that's the thing too is if they do a uh, another showcase, which is a rumor that's been floating around, okay. that'd be the perfect place to do yeah. it in oh. September, right? I'm you also, could announce it now and then say it's coming early next year. Uh, I'm also surprised. Like, cause they announced like some of the hardware they're working on at that last showcase, like the that weird little streaming. Di- stream. That's cause they're that's going out to die. Stream. That's why the stream thing, <laughs> and then the headphones, like the Bluetooth earbuds or whatever. That those I still want. They, I haven't heard any word on those. Yeah. So in my head, it's like, oh, that also would have been a great place, like alongside like this, this. Oh, and one last thing. Zoom, zoom, zoom. PS5 Slim I coming this fall, I, and it's like it whoa. almost makes. Yeah, I wonder if they were maybe trying to nail down, you know, the final build. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, yeah. we've heard about we've heard stories of of consoles 
that you know they go down to the to the wire you know the ps3 controller remember when they first showed off the ps3 and it had that terrible looking controller the boomerang baby right and they were sick. able to change that right before <laughs> release and were able to ship out yeah that's true the, the actual dual shock 3 so hardware can change very quickly it wasn't a dual shock 3 remember it was that weird six axis oh that's right we didn't get dual no, they, shock they until... did make i had a dual shock for some reason i thought they didn't release the dual shock till later they did I got okay. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not like yeah. The six they, axis. they eventually release a dual shock, but it, I think at launch it was only the six axis. It was just six got, a, six axis. Yeah. Which but I got wild. a dual shock. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. A couple more. I mean, if if it's coming out in two months, like Microsoft seems it's, to I don't think, think then we hear about it within the next month. Like by by the end of August, we definitely hear about it. So yeah. Well, not long to wait. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's coming out in two months. I think it's getting announced in two months, and okay. then it'll be out right before Christmas holiday. Right, yeah, right before Christmas like, or early, it, early next year. Yeah, yeah. And I then I think, that. I think they do that, and then I think they fire sale the uh, regular models that they have. So I think the um, current PS5 and the current PS, uh, the digital and the disc edition. I think you take a hundred bucks off of each of those. Get them out so they're four hundred and three hundred dollars, and then you leave the new slim at four. And you do that external hard drive that everybody's been talking about, or not hard drive, disk drive. I don't know. I don't. I don't see them dropping the price on the main one. Cause they, I do. If you're trying to move units, if you're trying to clear out stock, I would advise the retailers, hey, chop these down so you can get them out of the door, because we only want to sell this one SKU. And then we'll sell the disk drive. So if people want to get discs, they can. Because that saves a lot of money on Sony's part, only having to produce one SKU. Yeah. The disk drives are also are also compatible, though, with the digital edition of the console, like the one we have. So that's what makes me think, like, they wouldn't necessarily be in a hurry to get rid of old stock because the disk drive would still be usable, not only for the new thing, but also for old ones. So, but I don't I know. I guess, yeah. Maybe that, I, I, I would say the disk units then more than anything they would want to get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind of phase those out um, because, I mean, I, they they are very obviously the less popular one. I mean, I guess I don't know for a fact. I don't. I haven't seen numbers. No, no. I mean, but, this, this, but from I, just only, what I hear online and from friends and stuff like that, like just aesthetically, like aesthetics alone, people aren't fans of the disc one, let alone like how many people you have. I already don't the like the PS5 so. one. This one, the the digital makes it tolerable. I can't stand the disc version. It looks so <laughs> bad. It looks like it has a big tumor on the side. Yeah, it's kind of wild looking. Um. All right. Well, that's uh, that's probably about it for that news story. There. Just like I said, stay tuned because if when it's announced, we'll be talking about it. Who knows? Absolutely. Maybe Adrian will get one to show off to us. You know, maybe. Um. All right. This. Next news story, Sega executive dismisses play to earn blockchain games as boring. Yes, yes. <laughs> Written by yes. George Yang over at IGN. Uh, Sega hasn't, uh, isn't as all, Sega isn't as all in on blockchain gaming as it was before. Now withholding its biggest IP such as Sonic the Hedgehog from being used in third party blockchain games. This move is to ensure that Sega doesn't devalue its own content. Speaking with Bloomberg, Sega co-chief operating officer Shuji Utsumi panned blockchain games as boring. The action in play-to-earn games is boring. What's the point if games are no fun, Utsumi said. However, Sega will still let external partners use characters from lesser-known franchises such as Three Kingdoms and Virtua Fighter as NFTs. Itsumi noted that the technology remains useful. The IPs they don't care about. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Itsumi noted that technology remains useful in instances where it's possible to move characters and items between games. Uh, the Sega is also pausing its own blockchain gaming projects for now and being indecisive about implementing Web3 technology in its upcoming suite of super games. Uh, however, uh, Sega is still open to using blockchain technology if it ever does become successful, as Utsumi said. Uh, that the audience shouldn't doubt risk takers. For the majority of people in the video game industry, what blockchain advocates may say may sound a bit extreme, but that's how the first penguin that's how the first penguin has always been. <laughs> I is that Wait, a, is that, is that something is, is that a, like a like a weird like phrase in Japan that you get like You keep reading. I'm a, I'm going to do a little research. The that, that, but that's how the first penguin has always been. We should never underestimate them. I don't know what that means. 
Um, Go ahead. Blockchain gaming has been a controversial topic over the last few years. Many companies jumped onto the trend, including Square Enix and Ubisoft. However, many gamers weren't fond of this. More companies have also dismissed blockchain gaming after it hadn't taken off as high as expected. EA initially spoke positively about blockchain gaming, but then later stated it wasn't driving hard in that direction anymore. So, uh, this is a win. This is huge. Like People are finally realizing that all the hype around NFTs and blockchain is exactly that, just a bunch of hype and not much anything else. Uh, I guarantee you all those weird, like stupid gorilla NFTs that everyone bought for like millions of dollars are worthless, worthless now <laughs> after just I two congratulate years. anybody who was able to make money off of that stupid stuff and people buying it. If you were, them. if you were quick, if you were quick, I know people profited greatly off a lot of the NFT stuff. Like if you were quick to buy and quick to sell, but unfortunately, if you made any significant amount of money, I congratulate you making money yeah. off of stupid people. But <laughs> unfortunately, the the actual true believers are all just like sitting on a tra- pile of trash right now. I mean, again, I'm an outsider looking in. There might be more going on there than I realize, but. Twitter. Wow. We're about the, to get out. The Twitter. I'm, I know. Oh man, the Twitter sphere has been extremely quiet lately. I feel like that's all you used to see on Twitter was all the NFT dudes, and now all of a sudden it's like you don't hear anything. Um, yeah, I like. <laughs> you're right. We're, we're about to get we're a gang of comments on this one. <laughs> oh man. Also, you real don't quick. understand the complexity of Web three and NFT. Yeah, we just have to hold strong. Okay, bro. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. That's what I want to say to all those people who watch the Xbox Bethesda. Uh, reaction stream that we did <laughs> right now right now if you go over to youtube.com slash super gamer boys our uh, reaction to the xbox bethesda showcase blowing up all of a sudden it's over like 500 views it was like under it was like all of our uh, summer game fest co- coverage was kind of just doing like not 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 as good as it did in previous years but all of a sudden our xbox showcase is blowing up and like in a few days we're up to like over 500 views and still climbing it's crazy it's always xbox <laughs> always xbox but <clears throat> the unfortunate thing is it's a bunch of people who just have a chip on their shoulder for whatever reason and hate our guts because they are because we said star because we said starfield is not going to cure cancer exactly that's why they are just destroying the comment section like, like disliking the video and i on one hand it's like it's a bummer it's it sucks to see people being negative towards content you made but on the other hand I was telling Adrian before, I was like, I want to go through and comment, like reply to all their comments and just be like, thanks for the view and the comment. Because any, like the way YouTube works in general, like in a very basic, simple sense is like when there's lots of interaction on something, they will show it more, (laughs) you know? And so like we're getting more views because people keep leaving comments and like discussing things. But on the other hand, it's just such a bummer that it's all like negative stuff. People calling us like just or <laughs> saying how stupid we are for, for, our, for our opinions. I'm not worried about it. But yeah, so that's what I feel Think like. Bo- that's what I feel like I this bought- video is gonna. This video is gonna turn into because now we like this blockchain. We're gonna get all the blockchain because of that. Here. That th- because of that showcase. This is in my house. I know. Yeah. I'll- I don't want to hear anything from anybody else. All right. Okay. <laughs> Look. All right. I I see the vision now. Okay. I'm here. But I'm I, at the same time. If they screw up, I'm going to tell you they screw up, okay? They're not infallible, and they shouldn't be. None of them are. None of these companies are infallible, all right? They're not your friends. They want your money. Mm-hmm. Never forget that. <laughs> they don't care about you. <laughs> they don't care about you. They want your money. Yep. All right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, same thing with the blockchain bros. Don't even think about Or, you know what? Think about commenting, but just be a little nicer. Just be a little nicer. That's all. So that way I don't feel sad in the morning when I see all the emails when I wake up. That's the first thing I do is look at all the email like, yeah, it's a bummer. Um, but you gotta let that stuff go, bro. Um, yeah, I I just I I guess over like with this new story, like I'm glad they're not doing it. But even still, I'm trying to think in my head, like, how how do you implement it? Be like it just doesn't sound like a fun game. And I guess that's what he's saying here. Like uh, uh what's his name? Uh Utsumi, he's like Ultimately, it needs to be a fun game first. And if it's not fun, like, why make it? And that's why they're not doing it. But in my head, like, Square Enix and Ubisoft are, as far as we know, still heading that direction. Like, how do you make a fun game that's also, (sighs) like, 
I don't know, because it just sounds like a trading card game with high, very high stakes. Square Enix is still <laughs> in it, and they're going full bore, dude. Full bore. They, I think, um, what is it, a fifth of their total projected spending in the near future from their last uh, shareholders call is going to be going towards uh, Web3 and, and blockchain stuff. It's crazy. They're about to make a huge mistake, dude. Yep. Yep. Not. Which you know what it may weaken them up enough to when uh, somebody comes a calling, making that acquisition call, it might happen. Oh man, uh, does, is that is that what Microsoft needs? Is another? I think Sony's going to buy them. You think Sony would? Mm-hmm. I think they're going to buy them in retaliation if the uh, if the uh, Activision deal goes through. Hmm. Interesting. I don't, Which would make me a I, lifetime PlayStation customer because that means Kingdom Hearts is going to be exclusive to PlayStation. So, oh, you're talking about Square, not Ubisoft, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I said Square. I, I, I thought in my I I heard you wrong. I thought you said Ubisoft Square. Uh-uh. Um. My my only thought to that is Xbox is having a hard enough time acquiring Activision Blizzard. If that goes through. I think at least for a while, like there's going to be a, a heavy cooldown period before the FTC and all these organizations allow any more acquisitions. Like I feel like they're going to be like, "All right, everyone, chill not, out for like the next ten years," you know? <laughs> not not for Especially, not for Square because because it, it's it's Japanese. It's a Japanese company buying another Japanese company. Uh yeah. So I, they don't adhere to to you know FTC or CMA or anything like that. I guess that's they just true. have to. Uh, whatever you know statutes and boards that japan has yeah and which i'm sure they yeah. have stuff but yeah it's, oh yeah i'm sure they have <clears throat> those organizations in place but i think it's going to be a much different story hmm. if sony you know decides hey we want to acquire square enix i don't think they're going to get much traction at all yeah i don't think they hold uh that that kind of thing in in as high regard as uh other other countries do i don't know i could be wrong but i think they they don't value games as far as like commerce as much as you know other industries i guess my my only thought though is like even though this like the activision blizzard xbox thing is taking place in america it's still needing to be passed by all the boards around the around the world like in the eu and uk and all these countries like so like was it like brazil there was like even like remember there was a hang up in brazil for a little bit and then they cleared that up like so it's still still very much a worldwide thing but but maybe maybe it would be smoother just because it's you know it, 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 where it's starting out is is different you know like you said like you know being american companies compared to japanese but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't. The way they I do business is very different. I don't so. know. I don't understand. I, I didn't go to business school. I don't know how this stuff. Works. I didn't either. I just, but I'm just. I'm, I've, I have a, a gut feeling that if it might be a little smoother. Yeah. If you know, three months from now, when this whole Activision deal is done, if we hear rumblings about, you know, uh, um, I don't know who the president of Sony Japan is right now. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, I, but let's just say Jim Ryan. <laughs> Happens to make a stop in the Square Enix. I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. So, especially and if this blockchain stuff backfires. Exactly. Or even, yeah, in and even if it doesn't backfire, like the hope would be PlayStation would go in there and shut it down. Like be like, we're done. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's part of the uh, that's part of the condition. Yeah. Yeah. If we if we buy you this this blockchain stuff is done. All right. Um, man. Um. Sorry, I just happened to oh, look over. Oh, that means Dragon Quest could be exclusive too. Oh, dude, yeah, Square oh, acquisition no. would be would be crazy if that ever happened. Like that'd be so cool. Um, sorry, I just happened to look over at chat and saw that over on YouTube, Assassin Dude One Ten commented, uh, uh, "They for real working on a PS Five Slim." There's rumors. We talked about it earlier in the show, so make sure to check out the full show later on. Uh, We're hoping they are because I'm going to get one if they do. Uh, from the the whole legal case uh, with the Microsoft versus the FTC right now, some documents, secret documents came out that re- referenced them. So make sure to check out the show later on so you can uh, hear what we were talking about there. Um, 
All right, this last news story we're going to get to here. Overwatch 2 won't be getting any more PvE story missions until at least 2024. It's from Hope Bellington over at Games Radar. Womp, 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 womp. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Overwatch 2 won't be getting any new PvE story missions for at least the next couple of seasons. The game's executive producer has confirmed, appearing in a recent live stream with Twitch streamer Imong. I don't, I, maybe that's how you say it. Uh, Jared Noose, executive producer of Overwatch 2, discussed the game's PvE content, revealing that we won't be getting any new missions until a couple more seasons have passed. Don't expect the next round of story missions in the next season and the season after that, or anything like that, Noose explains. It is very much like trying to find that balance between getting story missions in front of the players quickly, because we love story stuff, and giving ourselves enough time to make changes or add features. The producer continues... Noose didn't give us a date for when they expect the new PvE content, but judging from his comments as well as the timing of Overwatch 2's new seasons, it would be fair to assume the developer is hinting towards a 2024 timeframe. Elsewhere in the stream, Noose goes on to say, to be fair, there's a bunch of stuff that we want to do next year or that are already in development for next year that will fill the gaps that people will have in between. Noose continues, we're trying to make it so that it doesn't feel like and then there's nothing for a long extended period of time. It's more like there's this cool thing and there's this other narrative thing and there's other narrative thing. We keep telling interesting stories and moving that all forward. Um, this is all very interesting to read only because uh, I just, I mean, we did a story a couple months ago now about how they canceled the single player mode, the story mode, which is wild because that's like the reason they made Overwatch 2 was because like hey we for some reason we can't make single player mode work on overwatch one so we're making a new game oh for hey. some reason this can't be an update yeah for for overwatch one you uh, can call it overwatch one 2.0 yeah or whatever fortnite figured it out uh and then or just call it overwatch <laughs> you know like maybe make it an umbrella and yeah. then just add all that stuff into the first game yeah. We can't do that for some reason. Yeah. So they make a new game and then they are like, oh, actually, it's too much work. So we're not gonna we're not gonna make single player content for the new game. It's like, what the heck are you talking about? What is happening? So um yeah, I, I mean you're you're the resident Overwatch expert. Do you have uh um any thoughts on this? Like I, I well, have you played Overwatch 2 at all? I guess. I'm trying to remember if you've played it at all. Uh, yeah. Uh, give me just a second. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no worries. I'll be right back. Um, yeah, with over, like I played a little bit of the first Overwatch, uh, but never really got an Overwatch 2, which is wild because it's free to play. You know, you think I would have jumped in and tried it, but, um, I, I guess, yeah, again, it comes down to, I guess this is just all, all confusing. They cancel single player content because they don't have enough time and manpower to make a full story mode or they weren't weren't able to fit it within their their you know the frame that they wanted to fit it within but then but then they're like hey we're still gonna do story stuff but now it's pve it sounds cool don't get me wrong like maybe i'll jump in to check it out like a, a, at some point you know not anytime soon i have enough other games to play right now but uh i guess for me it just it just seems contradictory like hey we can't do it it's not working and they're like oh actually we are going to do it it's just not going to be single player now it sounds like they're taking everything they had for single player mode and moving it over to pve which i guess that's better than nothing but um yeah so uh let's see uh assassin dude in chat bro overwatch 2 low-key dope but at the moment it's terrible it's like not even fair okay so is it a broken game then again i haven't played overwatch 2 at all but is it like just really uh, uh like fairly like as far as like the the way the characters are and stuff is it just like this is a meta broken is that that type of messed up or is it just like performance wise um because honestly like uh yeah i've steered clear of it not only because of just how weird and shady the whole overwatch 2 thing has been in my opinion um but also activision blizzard stuff in general i've been kind of uh steering clear of just because of um i don't know i'm not a fan of activision blizzard right now with the whole uh sorry about that uh, oh no worries um with uh, uh bobby Kodak and stuff like that so i haven't played any activision blizzard stuff i've been kind of like i guess low-key kind of boycotting it but um okay assassin dude 110 confirms the meta is just 
broken over at, on Overwatch 2 as well. He says it's it's a dope game, but it's just terrible to play because it's not fair. Like the characters are busted, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I played it when it first came out. Okay. And it felt a little off then, but I, I also claim that, or I can attribute that to maybe Overwatch 1 bias because I was so used to playing Overwatch 1. Right. Um, And then, I don't know. It just never, the new 5v5 just never really clicked with me. Uh, Cause I play support and I just feel like, I don't know. There wasn't enough meat for me. Like I, people didn't, I didn't feel like we were playing as a unit a lot when I was playing mm. with people on there. Okay. Um, and then I just kind of drifted off, which is weird because I love overwatch. Like I said, I've been playing overwatch since it came out. Yeah. Um, and then we get the news that, there's no PVE, which is the whole point of what Overwatch 2 was supposed to be for. Well, the, well there is PVE, <laughs> but there's not the single player. Originally there's there's no to be, PVE yeah. like they were saying there was yeah, going to be PVE. Exactly. There's going to be like single player story mission kind of thing, right? Right. Yeah. And then now we get that the we hear that the PVE that they were, uh, you know, that they were canceling or that the, the whole the whole thing. Now we're getting it, not getting it till next year. Yeah, it's. <laughs> So confusing and convoluted. Like, I feel like they've really lost the lead because, on this well, one. Well, and I say that because, okay, well, what updates have there been to the multiplayer that have been so significant that you felt the need to push PvE missions back that far? And I think Assassin Dude just said it, right? Like, the meta's already broken, or it's been broken for a while. So what are we really doing? Yeah. That, that would be my question. Yeah. Yeah, he says meta, and then he just commented again saying the ranking system and competitive is ridiculous as well. So it's like, sounds like overall. That got completely overhauled, I believe, too. It's just a mess over there. So, yeah. Like I, I said it I said it last time. I said, I really hate that, you know, an IP with such potential like Overwatch. I mean, Overwatch could have been absolutely massive. Yeah. Just with the, the lore itself, the characters, the cast, and, and, Blizzard has a top-notch cinematic studio. I honestly believe that if they would have had enough time and money, they could have done a feature film. And I think it would have been great. I mean, yeah, just the sh anytime they announce a new character, they put out those little shorts and stuff. Like, they're yeah. always so sick. Again, have, as a player who's, like, rarely actually played the game, very little of the first one, um, I was always, like, immediately, like, into it when I was like, oh, this looks so cool. Like, those, the that was the, Those were the things that drew me... I don't know if you remember. I think it was at a BlizzCon when they showed that first shot, uh, the first short where it was they were at the museum. They were at the Overwatch Museum. And then uh, Reaper is trying to, Reaper and um, they were trying to steal Doomfist Glove. Mm. And Tracer comes in. They have this battle all across the museum. Tracer and Winston are there. And uh, Widow, sorry. Widow and Reaper are trying to steal it. And it, just like it was like a 10 minute short i think something like that and i watched that and i said i can't believe that this is a, a cinematic intro for a game and that's what got me interested in overwatch in the first place yeah and i yeah i just i say all that to say that i i think this is just a magnificent mismanagement of an ip yes that honestly could have been gone going for much much longer and i think it's not going to end well if they continue down this path. I don't know what they can do to fix it. Like I said, the the leadership that they had in place is no longer there. Um, and it, I I just think that they don't have. I shouldn't say they don't have people who don't care because clearly they care about you know the craft of making games. But I think the the vision is just misguided. Hmm. So yeah, I would have to agree. Just as an outsider looking in, um, it's uh. Things have kind of gone off the rails over there. I mean, we've done a couple right. stories now already about how <laughs> messed up it is. So crazy. And then they like to say they like to say uh, we can't feasibly support the the PVE and the PVP at the same time. You're Blizzard. What are you talking about? They got money. You're under they Activision. Oh my God. You know how much money Activision makes every year? I mean, just with Call of Duty, just, and then you, and then King. Yeah, the, yeah. The, what do you mean? Just in a day on Warzone, like <laughs> I'm sure they make just 
insane amounts of money from the microtransactions. <laughs> and then they could probably say, well, we don't make this, the, the returns that we should. I wonder why you don't make the, the return on investment. Cause you're giving it's probably because the product is not very good. And Cause you're giving bonuses of Bobby Kotick. <laughs> <laughs> Stop paying to, you know, terrible people. And then that'll solve all your problems. If, uh, and now here's the thing, right? <laughs> and this is not necessarily on, it's actually not at all on the actual team making the game, right? If Activision is not giving them the resources that they need to, aka yeah. money or people, then I, I I empathize. I sympathize with the team. I get it. It's rough. You had to make a terrible decision. But I don't know. I just I don't know where this IP is headed. Yeah. I, and it's it sucks because <laughs> I really loved it. It was one of the few things that was different. In right. games, it was, I don't know, at its basis level, it had color in it and it had fun, different characters. And I don't know, it just felt like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. From all the gray and brown and and camouflage shooters and whatnot. And yeah. you had to work as a team. You actually had to work as a team. <laughs> you can't just ramble everything or else you'll lose. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, it, yeah. It, it was. I mean, it very obviously was a had something special because the first one people loved and adored. So the fact that the second one day. is getting hated on so much, it's like, all right, it's not not without good reason because it's not like... And I'll never get to play it again because they took it offline. That's what's wild to so. me is that they... Like, it's one thing to, like, make a new game, but then they completely shut down the old, like, the other one. That doesn't... I know it happens, but not yeah. often. I mean, you can still play freaking old... You can play, like, Call of Duty Black Ops still, like, or the Black Ops 3 or something like that. And I'm like, that game is... Because they want like, people to play 2 so bad. Like, I... Yeah. I hundreds, I'm sure, hundreds of hours I've, I've played of Overwatch, and it's... It's gone. And it's yeah. not because, oh, this is these are legacy servers, you know, nobody's playing on them anymore. Pl plenty, plenty of people were still playing Overwatch 1. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there was quite, quite a good number of them. Hmm. so yeah well stay yeah. tuned stay tuned for when they finally release the story mission because we will see we might, if they do that yeah, if they do we we might cover it here and you'll hear about it you'll uh maybe maybe adrian will even dust off his overwatch 2 cartridge and give it a shot you know <laughs> we'll, we'll see i'm not making any promises no promise no promise okay <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for the nerdy nudes. Uh, now it's time for our Patreon ad. This is a part of the show where I tell you to go over to patreon.com slash super gamer boys to watch uh to watch don't watch you could watch uh but it's to support us you can support us over there starting at just one dollar a month that's right one buck you get episodes early and ad free you got that in your car go in your exactly. car right now and go and look in the little cup tray i guarantee and, you got and, a dollar and, in there and little ashtray that you use for a change cup yeah it's in there <laughs> it's in you got there, a few months of support in there actually i know you do <laughs> uh um, that's right i'm making right. you feel guilty <laughs> So we, we do stream the recording of these live on Monday nights, but then the VOD gets locked down until uh, uh, Wednesday when it goes live for everyone else again. We re-release it there to the general public, uh, but with ads over on YouTube and podcast apps. Um, so if you want to get it ad-free uh, tonight, as after we finish recording, we'll release it all. Uh, Support us for just a buck. You can get the link to the YouTube stream, again, if you missed it. Uh, and then you can also get the audio recording without the ads, without this part. You don't have to listen to us ramble on about Patreon. Uh, and, uh, you know, help support the show. Help us make cool things. Uh, the $5 level, you get the show notes early. So Sunday, when I make those show notes up, I send them over to Patreon. You can take a look at them and leave your own questions, comments, concerns, thoughts to the news stories, to our listener question section, the mailbag segment. Um, uh, if you want to answer what you're playing, we're going to have later on the show. You can go ahead and tell us what you've been playing, what you think. So if you want to be a part of the show, have your voice heard, support's over at five bucks a month. And uh, yeah, you can be a part of the show. Ten bucks a month, you can be a Patreon, a, a, a Super Gamer sponsor, where you get the shout out at the beginning of each and every episode, as well as the previous perks. And then the $15 top dog tier Patreon producer. That's where you get all the previous perks and 
uh, you can kind of pitch a segment for the show. You can be a part in making more for the show, not just having your voice heard, but also being like, hey, let's do a segment about reviewing this, that, or the other thing. We've done movies in the past. Uh, Adrian used to be do super indie boys where we talk about cool indie games that we should check out. So uh, if you really, really love the show, want to help us make cool things or just support us and help us to make cool things, you know, we we, we have Patreon producers who've never even spoken to us, but they support us each and every month. We really appreciate it. We Angel can, investors. Yeah, we can buy games to talk about here on the show and whatnot or buy new equipment when we need it. So think about supporting us over there, patreon.com slash supergamerboys. And also, if you are watching over at twitch.tv slash the super gamer boys right now, uh, you can use your Amazon Prime Gaming sub. That is free each and every month. If you have Amazon Prime, you have uh, Twitch Prime Gaming, and uh, you can use that free sub once a month on any channel you want. So we'd appreciate if you use it on ours. We get five bucks. doesn't cost you a thing. So think about doing that. You get some sweet emotes over on Twitch. All right. That's it for the ad. Now let's get back to the show. Pardon me. A little bit of that uh, cough when I was sick a couple weeks ago. Still, still hanging on. Still hanging on. Yeah, All right. Falling apart it's, on me. It's falling apart. We're getting to the end of the show here, though. So we'll make it. We'll make it. It's that time of the show, Adrian, where I need to ask you. I'm contractually obligated to, in fact. Okay. What you playing? All right. Take a seat, good buddy, because I've been playing a lot, actually, over these Ooh, past uh, couple boy. of weeks. <laughs> uh, so I'll just I'll, I'll go through a couple. Um, that really stood out to me recently. Uh, so the first one uh, I played on it was the first game I played on on my new Xbox um, from from Game Pass. I would have gladly paid for it. However, uh, it was in the Wholesome Direct, I believe we watched this year. Um, it's called Door Done. It's spelled uh, D O R D O G N E. Uh, it is a French developer, I believe, uh, and it's independent. Um, and it is about a, how should I put this? So I don't give it away. Um, a young woman returns to her, uh, recently passed grandmother's home, uh, to try to piece together, uh, why she was never, how should I put this? Why she was never allowed to go and see her grandmother after she was a certain age um, and you're going through the house and, you know, the things that you pick up, they start to bring back memories of the time that you spent with your grandmother. Um, and let me tell you, this game is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it might be the best looking game that I've, that I've uh, seen you, this year. You posted some screenshots on Twitter and or in our discord even, and they were just like beautiful. It's like, that's the one with like the water. It's like watercolor almost. Right? Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Like, it's it's in and seeing an emotion too. I don't know how they were able to to make it all actually look like a living watercolor painting, but it it is so beautiful. And the game is it's full of charm. I really like the main character Mimi, uh, her both her adult self and her child self. Uh, the relationships are believable, you know, the, through the family, and it's not necessarily all roses all the time, but yeah. You want to see, you know, those relationships succeed and you, you you feel it, too, when there's that discord. Um, I definitely recommend this. It was an easy eight out of ten for me. Um, it, it was it's definitely um, it can, it's a little tough to control. Right. It feels like it feels like a PS1 game at times. You Ooh, know what okay. the way that the movement is. Yeah, uh, I think that's its biggest weakness, but everything else is so good that it kind of made that up for me that it made me want to continue playing. OK, um, so that's my first one. Uh, my second one is uh, I just finished it today. It just came out yesterday oh, for consoles, but it came out in 2021. Uh, okay. It's called Garlic, and it is a platformer where you play as a uh, young garlic boy. <laughs> and you are trying to ascend a tower uh, to go. Most people try to ascend this tower to get a wish from the goddess that lives on the top. But he doesn't want that. He wants to ask her on a, on a date. So <laughs> you're going through all the different stages in the tower to get to the top. So you can ask her out on a date. And 
let me tell you, dude, the, this game is so hard. Oh, like really? I thought, I thought Cuphead was hard, which it is. Like it, it's, it's on that same echelon. But sometimes, dude, this game asks a lot of the player. This is not if you're just <laughs> getting into games or you don't play a lot of like intensive games or anything like that. I would not recommend this for you because it <laughs> no. it asks. I don't know if maybe I'm getting old, but I feel like it took a lot. Of, it took everything I had in some sections to get through. Um, but it has a really good art style, really good animations. Uh, it's a lot of funny moments in there that I I did not expect. I don't know. It was really charming. I don't okay. think I would ever play it again. Not because it's bad, but just because it's that hard and I don't <laughs> want to go through it again. Um, but if you like hardcore games, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then my last one uh, was a playdate game. Um, it was called Direct Drive. Uh, you use oh, the crank yeah. on the play date to control. Uh huh. Um, I actually, uh, I know the developer. Um, I yeah. talked to him a lot. Um, awesome. And uh, you use the crank on the play date to control an old broken Victrola and help record performances for um, big stars who, of course, they're made up uh, back in the day in the 20s, you know, when Victrolas were, were a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, this game has a full on soundtrack that they made for it it's four different artists four or five and each one has songs that you have to do recordings for and it is a bunch of different styles and i think uh, it's up there i think the soundtrack is up there um you can listen to it on soundcloud but i think the way that they do it in the game they have like the fuzz and the grain you know that you would get when you listen to a record yeah. Um, so I think it kind of sounds better to me there. That's what I was trying to decide whether or not to tell you to go listen to it there or listen to it in the game. I like it in the game. It sounds good either way. Um, it's a very simple control scheme. You just, you know, keep the crank in time. Sometimes you got to speed it up. Sometimes you got to slow it down. And each artist has their own intricacies and things that you have to do for them. But yeah, it's it's very simple, but I enjoyed it a lot. So That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so those are my three that I have played recently. Um, yeah. How about yourself? Ooh, I have been playing a lot more cyberpunk. I know. I think, I think I talked about that last time uh, I was on. Uh, and I had mentioned previously that I had had like a couple crashes. Uh, Cause you had said you had had some crashes, Some, um, but yeah, you've, you've had a few, quite a few, uh, but I actually have not I've in the last two weeks, I've had maybe only just one other crash. So it's like as I'm getting further in the game, it's running better. Or maybe I or maybe I just got the settings dialed in finally, like visually. You're playing you know? it on deck still, right? <clears throat> uh, I'm actually mostly playing on PC now. Okay. I was playing it a lot on deck uh, initially, um, but that's not where I had the crashes. Surprisingly, it actually ran fine on the deck is when I played uh, previously or played on PC. That's where I was having the crashes. But um yeah since that last episode two weeks ago we recorded i've been like you know what like i really i this is a kind of game like i do i do want to experience it on a bigger screen with the higher resolution like it's just it's a big huge open world bombastic kind of like action going on cinematic it's like this this deserves a little bit bigger screen than the steam deck it ran great on the steam deck surprisingly other than being a freaking jet engine um (laughs) but uh yeah, but I have not had any any crashes since then. Like I got like graphics dialed in. I'm still doing like ray tracing on medium, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's been it looks gorgeous. It feels fantastic. It's running pretty much at like at the very least sixty. And sometimes it even goes a higher. Like I'm been getting like even seventy or eighty, which is crazy. Um, and uh, but I'd want to touch on like just the story like initially i was kind of like i i felt like i got lost quickly in the story like it, it became secondary even the main story was very much like okay whatever like get on to the next thing like it just i kind of like would skip through stuff but mm-hmm. this playthrough around uh, this playthrough i'm like oh man like this actually has a really good story it's and some really good characters and i'm <laughs> really enjoying it like i i gotta like every night i'm like all right dude how- how long till Keanu? I can sit down and play play some more cyberpunk? Like how 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 long can I get down in my office and play some more? Because I'm really enjoying it, and I know 
I just want to like say like we have given this game a lot of hate and I know the general media and public has given this game a lot of hate and I don't for for the specifically for <laughs> the performance of it it's completely like, called for it's completely necessary like it is it's still in shambles in most cases like I said it's been running great on my PC but like you're posting a crash on your PS5 like once a like week once a, if not more like you're co- constantly posting stuff so it's still not great and it had a terrible 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 launch which is crazy that did you see the article about the developer like the director over there being like it wasn't that bad like people were just dogpiling us i'm like oh i have <laughs> clips still sir <laughs> of of the things that were going on yeah. with your game Wild. okay from back when 2020 if yeah. you want to go down that route, trying to blame me, talking about it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yes, it was. It was bad. It was bad. But what I do want to say is the story and the characters are so solid. Like, it's really good. And even the yeah. gameplay, the gameplay can be janky at times. I'm having an issue now where uh, I'm doing the boxing matches and there's this one guy I'm stuck on, the second guy. Um, you got to get gorilla uh, arms, dude. OK, well, I can't afford them yet. I, I don't think I'm high enough level yet. I mean, they've popped up. I, I, have, I have the money. I don't have the, I need to go a couple more levels still. But um, I get him like super close to almost dead, like chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And then all of a sudden he gets one cheap shot where he's not even near me. He punches and I think I'm out of range and somehow he hits me and it's driving me crazy. And it comes down to like, there's still some jank in the hit boxes and like where the game kind of glitches, even though I'm getting 60, 70 FPS, like it's not a frame rate issue. It's completely like, oh, my camera is back here, but the hitbox is still up there for some reason. Like it's a lag within the code of the game, which is frustrating. So um, there's it has its issues, but holy cow, the story is fantastic. Uh, I'm feel like, yeah, again, this playthrough, I'm like, oh, there's I'm I don't know. I'm just picking up so much more on like it's the, hidden. Intri- the intricacies of the characters and the emotion that's happening uh, with characters dying and like dealing with oh. that. Like, it's like, holy cow, like this, this is a great story. It's so unfortunate that it's such a rocky start because it's a great game. Like, <laughs> honestly, if you can get through the crashes and all the issues, which again, happen less now, they still happen on console mainly, um, but not near as often. If you can find this game on sale, like I highly recommend, please go get Cyberpunk. It's on sale. It's on a sale right now on Steam. Is it? Is it? Oh yeah, it's probably part of the Steam sale right now, huh? Which is happening. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, do yourself a favor and, and and give it a shot because it's it's really yeah, it's thirty bucks right now. Like it's really great. And with the new Phantom Liberty DLC coming out this fall, they're saying that it's basically like borderline a whole new game. Like that's that's how they're treating it. Like it's a full. It's it's not. It's not like a ten or fifteen dollar DLC. It's a thirty dollar DLC. Like from what it sounds like, it's almost like they're they're totally revamping the game from all the previews I've been reading. Like it's like, all right, we're starting over almost with Cyberpunk and like this other mission. It's probably stuff. for the so, best. Yeah. So yeah, I highly recommend checking that out. I I, I I've been really been loving it. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Um, I think yeah, the performances are really good and the story is is once once you once you get going. And I think once that that first event happens, I think you know the one I'm talking about. World. Yeah, and get immersed in that world as well. Oh yeah, that's I, I was just talking about that a few days ago. I said, and I still stick to it, especially when we did our. Um, uh, I think we did a book club about that one time. It wasn't a Not book about club. We did it. We did it two weeks with. That was a very oh, short. Is that what lived, it was? It was a very short lived uh, show that we used to do, but we would. You know, we did it with the medium and we did it with Cyberpunk and one other game, I think, where we played it for two weeks or one week maybe or something. And then we got together and talked about it. But, yeah, it's oh. like a live a live stream. We did it because we did it with Dan, who hadn't even played the game yet. He played That's the first, right. Like, 10 That's minutes right. of the game. And they're like, dude, what are you doing here? I was supposed to put like 20 hours um, in and you're like 10 minutes in. I, I still stand by what I said back then. Um, I think Night City and even the outskirts, you know, that you go into – I think is is a masterfully done uh, world, mm. and that's on top of the performances in the story. I think, I think it's. I always judge a place where I feel like, do you believe? Do you fully believe that this place could exist and that you can live there? You know, if it were ever to be real, and I think you absolutely could live in Night City, um, if you know, 
by some magical power or whatever, it, it became real. Uh, <laughs> but that's how good, you know, architecturally it's been designed. And I, I liken yeah. that to very few things that have been done like that. Um, I think Rapture is another example of if this were real, this feasibly seems like people could exist here. Yeah. Um, and I think Night City is just it's on another level than most other uh, game worlds that we've seen recently. So yeah. um, I, my hat is always off to to CD Projekt Red in that regard. It just it didn't run well and now it runs pretty good. And now we can finally experience what they want us to experience. So, yeah. Turns out it's a, it's a great good the game. It just yeah. it, it, you you could not experience it before. Couldn't, couldn't do it. Not possible. So, um, the second game I've been playing. I, I mean, I've been playing a few other things here and there. I jumped into Power Wash Simulator a little bit. Played some of the Final Fantasy VII levels. Um, I gotta play the SpongeBob one. It's still. really fun. The SpongeBob is paid DLC. You have to pay for it. It's not free. It's only eight bucks for yeah. SpongeBob. That's nothing. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm too poor. Remember, I won't even pay two bucks for Viz. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to. When, old, I, can, when uh, I can get it for free over from Ebenezer my public Scrooge library. Um, but no, the other game, the main game I've been playing, which I know you were stoked about. Um, I only played about the first hour, hour and a half or so. And I've had a hard time getting back because A, I've just been freaking loving cyberpunk. And B... Um, it's Persona 5, and my only gripe so far, well, I don't know. It has a very long tutorial. Like I said, I played about an hour, hour and a half, and I feel like it's still like it's still holding my hand. On one hand, it's a gripe. It's again, it's 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 a positive and a negative. I'm both I'm glad it's holding my hand still, but at the same time, I just want to play the game. But okay, so here's there. It's Do holding you? my hand still, but at the same time, I still don't understand what's happening. Uh, and like combat's still confusing and even like what the world like that I'm getting into. So on one hand, I'm glad it's there. And on the other hand, I'm like, I'm an hour and a half in. It's still holding my hand. Like I'm surprised they have like, I feel like they're they're really dragging it out. Like just land the plane and let me play the game. Can I put it into perspective for you? Okay. Give it to me. Okay. So it's been holding your hand for an hour and a half, right? Uh When it lets your hand go, you still have about 90 something hours to go. So it needs to make sure that yeah. you know what you're doing, what's going on, who is who to start out. Because imagine they just say, oh, this is how this works. You do this and you do this. And they, you know, push you off. Hmm. You'll be 40 something hours in and <laughs> detached from the story, detached from the world and everything. Cause you have no idea what's going on. That's, yeah. That's a, a staple for Persona is they and I don't this I don't think it's necessarily like handholdy in this in the negative sense. I think it's no, no. It's they want to the make sure that, yeah. that you have a grasp on what this world is, how it works, yeah. and how the game itself works within that world. So yeah, once they let your hand go, that's when the whole world goes like this, boom, and it explodes. And okay. you're on your own. You can't you can't go back now and say, yeah. well, what is this? What does this do? Because the game's going to be like, no, we, no, we told you how this works way back when. So yeah. they just want to make absolutely sure that you know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I and I also, on. some things are going to happen if you are where I think you are that are going to start to turn a corner here and okay. uh, uh, perk up your antennas. So, OK, that's trust the process, for, dude. Trust the process. For, sure, for me, like playing through it, I've enjoyed what I've played uh, what little in combat I've been able to do. That's the thing. Combat's been super simple and very basic and very short. Like, I haven't had much combat at all, really. Like, just very little. Um, and it's like, Tip okay, of the iceberg. I, That's what I, I was looking for. Yeah. I, and I like, I like what they're, what they're, like the little sample they're giving me. I like these little samples. Like, the little, like the, you go to the ice cream and, like, hey, can I taste that one? Like, they're giving me little sample spoons. And I'm like, I like this. I like this. I like this. But when do I right. get the full. Like portion of it, like I want. See, the that. full portion is going to be that you know when you go to the grocery store and they sell those ice creams in that bucket <laughs> yes. that's with the handle on it. <laughs> that's what like they're going to give you when you're ready for the full Walmart, the big it. great value bucket. Yeah, that's what you're about to get. Cream. That's what's coming. Uh, so. Okay, okay, yeah. So, I, and again, like I, it's hard for me to even say it's a negative because, like I said, like I don't know what's going on. So, without it, I feel like I would just be frustrated and leave so i'm glad it's still there but it's also like 
it's just long a longer tutorial than what I'm used to. Like I wish I would have landed the plane sooner, but you, you're right. You put it, you did put it in perspective. I forget because I've never played a Persona game before. I forget that it is like a 90 hour game. Like this is a game you don't just like knock out in 20 hours and move no. on. Like this is something like this might be the rest of my life, honestly, with how little I get to play video games. <laughs> I, this might be the one I, I just work on until I'm 98 and keel over dead. So um, I'll, I'll die in my in my chair in the nursing home playing Persona 5. <laughs> like, is he playing that game from 20, 2019? <laughs> still playing, still playing. On my Sir, Steam Deck even. On my Steam Deck, it's still running as well. It's great. <laughs> Your first-gen Steam Deck? <laughs> first-gen Steam Deck, baby. <laughs> We don't even uh, use consoles anymore, sir. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. It's in your brain now. Oh, man. So, yeah. Um, Persona 5. I know you've been just champing at the bit for me to try any Persona. So, I know when I post that, you're just like, yes, finally he's doing it. So, I may be uh, texting you, messaging you here and there for, for some help. I've done that with a few I'm games. Here with whatever where you I, need. Yeah, where I'm like, Adrian, I need help. Like Kingdom Hearts, I remember texting you a couple times. So, this might be the same thing for the next. Uh, let me see. If I live until I'm 98, at like well, 60, next, about 60, 60 years or so. next 68 years, I'll be texting yeah. you. So asking you questions about. You better hope 5. I don't kick off in that time. <laughs> and you be oh, on your man. own. Yep. All right. Well, that is it for the show this week. We thank you all so much for listening and watching. Uh, for you who caught us live over on YouTube.com slash SuperGamerBoys and Twitch.tv slash the Super Gamer Boys, we appreciate you. Um, remember, for those watching live, these streams are going to get cut off, but you can check us all, uh, check everything out on Wednesday to the public, or you can go to Patreon.com slash SuperGamerBoys, support us over there for just a buck to get it tonight. That's right. If you miss the beginning of the stream, just support us over there for a buck and get the link to both the YouTube stream and uh, the MP3 to download right to your device. So you can listen to you whenever you want on your drive to work or whatever. Um, you can also support us by going to sgbstore.com and buy some sweet merch. We got coffee mugs. We got stickers. We got T-shirts. We got some fun stuff. So think about going over there. Uh, buy a birthday gift for that one cousin that you just always had that connection over video games maybe you don't know him super well but you're like hey we always we grew up playing video games once in a while together maybe i think Bahamas, you would like this i think you'd like this podcast so i'm gonna buy you a cool coffee mug or a sick t-shirt this is super gamer boys i'm not wearing one right now i pointed to my shirt as if i was but yeah. uh <laughs> go ahead and check that out Rate and review us where you can. We'd appreciate that, especially over on uh, Apple Podcast app. Uh, that's kind of the, the big dog over there. So leave your five stars. We'd appreciate it. Shout out again to Jack Sriracha and Yate for allowing us to use their music on the show here in the background. We appreciate them uh, for giving our show some good, good vibes. So go show them support by listening over on Apple Music and Spotify. Links will be in the uh, YouTube and podcast descriptions later you can check that out um and during the week make sure to find us over at supergamerboys.com twitter and instagram you can f and threads twitter instagram That's and right. threads at supergamerboys uh i'm over on twitter instagram and threads at g morling where can they find you at uh, i am at all those places as well at homeboy at homeboy and links to all those are of course always in the descriptions as well all right, that's all I got this week, Adrian. Am I taking us out? You got it, Chief. Folks, thanks for hanging out with us for another week of Super Gamer Boys. Uh, we appreciate everybody who watches, listens, tells somebody about it, especially those who subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, your support means everything. It helps us to keep doing this. Like we always say, we'd be doing this anyway, but, you know, why not record it and share it with all of you? So here we are. And until next time, we are the Super Gamer Boys. And we will catch you on the flippity flop. Oh, yeah. I found out about that penguin thing. Um, the first penguin is like the one who's the first one to jump in the ocean to catch the fish. And then all the other ones follow uh, after him. So it's like being courageous. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's still pretty lame.